Okay guys, now we're going to look at the stomach. I hope you guys can see this well, but here's the stomach. Okay, so the stomach is um, starts here and goes to here. Food enters up here through the esophagus, coming down through the diaphragm, and it's going to enter the stomach, travel through the stomach, and leave the stomach through the duodenum, which would be right here. As it comes through the stomach, it'll enter the cardiac region, which is this area right around the esophagus. This is called the fundus. Then it'll go into the body of the stomach, which is right here, so this middle portion, and then go into the pyloric region, which is here, this little triangular portion, right before it leaves. The stomach has three layers of muscle, just like most of the digestive tract. You can see the longitudinal muscles here, the circular muscles here. Actually, I'm sorry. The rest of the digestive tract only has the longitudinal, the outer longitudinal, and the inner circular muscles. The stomach is unique because it has a third layer, these muscles here, which are oblique and the stomach processes food like a cement mixer so it has to be able to churn food around so that's why it has the extra layer of muscles. This yellow portion is all parts of the vagus nerve that's innervating the stomach. If we turn this over you can see some of the blood vessels of the stomach. This part of the stomach is called the lesser curvature and you'll have a fatty apron that hangs off of this called the lesser omentum. This is the greater curvature of the stomach and you'll have a fatty apron that hangs off of this called the greater omentum. You can see that there's a blood vessel that lies in this lesser curvature. There's also a blood vessel that lies in the greater curvature. These blood vessels come from the originally from the abdominal aorta. These are actually two vessels that are anastomosing together with each other. On this side of the stomach where you have the esophagus, this portion of the artery is called left gastric artery. And this is going to come right off of the celiac trunk in the abdomen. This portion of the artery on the pyloric region is called the right gastric artery. Right gastric is going to come off of common hepatic artery and anastomose with left gastric so you can feed the whole greater curvature. These two vessels down here are called gastroomental vessels. On the esophageal side that's left gastroomental Okay, and this one is going to come off of splenic artery. And on the pyloric side, this is right gastroomental artery. And this is going to come off of gastroduodenal artery that comes off of the common hepatic artery. If we open the stomach up, look at this side, anatomically correct. So, Here's the esophagus. Food's going to pass through this little thick band of muscle here called the cardiac sphincter into the cardiac region of the stomach. These folds on the inside of the stomach are called rugae. So this is the fundus here. This is the body. This would be the pyloric region. You can see there's rugae all along. This allows the stomach to expand. And right here, as food is exiting the stomach, it will go through this very tight muscular sphincter called the pyloric sphincter. It's very, very tough, and you can see this on the cadaver very well. And then food will exit here, and this is the very beginning of the duodenum. I think that's it for the stomach. I wanted to show you this stomach too because it has those fatty aprons I was talking about. So this is the lesser curvature of the stomach. This is the greater curvature. Here's the esophagus, the pyloric sphincter. 
This would be the lesser omentum. This would be the greater omentum. We can also see the vessels on this one as well. Here are left and right gastric artery and vein, left and right gastro-omental artery and vein. So remember the left ones are on the esophagus side, the right ones are on the pyloric sphincter side. And here's your sphincter right here.